numbers came in today and they show that the U.S. added a robust 272,000 jobs in May. It's a sign that employers are still optimistic enough about the economy to keep hiring. And while the unemployment rate did edge up slightly, it's still sitting at a low 4%, although it does end a 27-month streak of unemployment below 4%. Joining me now to break down what this means, Melissa Armo. She is the founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, what should we take away from this jobs report? Well, the takeaway for this report today, it has different opinions for depending on who you are. Obviously, this means a strong economy. So that's good for people who want to stay at work and keep their jobs and keep pushing forward. But the negative from this report is that the Fed is probably not going to cut interest rates in July and may not cut interest rates twice this year, which everyone was thinking that they were, or maybe not at all. So because the economy is so strong, the Federal Reserve may not cut interest rates. So that's negative for People, obviously, that are looking to buy houses where mortgage rates have ticked up and they were waiting to see if maybe they dropped down or people that wanted to do refinances. But it's good if you want to feel secure in your job. And again, people are back to work. People are working since COVID. And obviously, employers are really wanting people to stay at work. And the other takeaway from the report was that wages actually ticked up too. So employers are paying people more now, which is good for the average worker as well. It's interesting because a lot of people will hear that and they'll think, I need a job, I need to keep working. All of that is very good, but I'm also paying a pretty high rate on a mortgage. If I want to go take out a car loan, that's pretty high. Why is it that the economy has to slow down and the Federal Reserve perhaps would be more interested in a report showing that hiring is slowing when it comes to cutting interest rates? I know it, it really seems to not make any sense. And what's even stranger about this report today is we we added more jobs, but the unemployment rate went up. I know it only went up one tenth of a percent, but it still went up. So like you said, it was supposed to be 3.9 percent. It went up to 4 percent. So it would really take probably well over 4 percent unemployment rate, which means people that are slowing down hiring for the Federal Reserve to cut rates dramatically. And even if the Fed cuts rates once or twice between now and the end of the year, even if they stay on track to do that, even if it's not in July, the fact is I don't think that's going to help people that much. When credit card interest rates are 31, 32, 33 percent, even if you get from 33 percent down to 32 percent, it's really not that much of a help. Same thing with mortgage rates from 8 percent to 7.5 percent if they drop a half a percent this year. People really are feeling the push from the last 12 months when they raised rates so fast so quick which of course when this is a while ago when back in early 2023 where some of the smaller regional banks actually went under because rates pushed up too high too fast so i think it's you look at the report today and you say well yeah this is good but really is it good for the future and i think that people have to keep working they have to continue on their path and i think people have been cutting back for example not buying non-essentials like at the grocery store or the store or going out to eat as much because people are trying to save money. Uh, what are the areas of the job market that seem to really be thriving right now? Well, I mean, the, the areas of the job market that are thriving are the same thing that's been thriving for years, which is tech. There's a boom in tech. And, you know, again, it's the same old thing where we've had this problem with illegal Im immigration that's come in and they say, well, that's good. These people are now all of a sudden getting hired. They're getting jobs. Well, that takes away from the, the jobs where people really want to get on the lower end. You know, some of the places in the country, California is one of them, raised the minimum wage. And as a result of that, some, some businesses had to close because they couldn't afford to, to pay the minimum wage when it went up. So you have people coming into the country, they're taking these lower uh, paying jobs, and that's hurting the economy, I think, personally, for regular everyday Americans, even though it may be helping some businesses who want to hire people under the table or whatever the case may be. But you still have people that are making and earning a good wage that are in managerial positions, that are in the tech uh, and that are in banking, finance. So those jobs are still out there and people are still earning a lot of money with those jobs. Uh, at this point, when it comes to the Fed cutting interest rates, what do you expect for this year? I wouldn't be surprised if they don't cut interest rates at all, but because it's an election year, they might still cut interest rates once between now and the end of the year. Oh, I'm only saying that because it's an election year and because they put out 
even six months ago that they would cut rates this year just to make everybody happy. They may cut once this year. But again, like I said, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference for regular everyday people, for consumers, or even for the housing market. And as much as I don't want the economy to ever go into a recession, if the Fed just refuses to cut interest rates at any at any point in time going into 2025 by one to four cuts, and the unemployment number hits closer to four and a quarter or even 4.3, I think there's a possibility that we could go into recession, then this great, great economy that everybody keeps touting and talking about in the administration will not look the same come you know a year from now, halfway through 2025. All right, Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Thank you so much for taking the time and your insight today. Thank you. And as we head